you would make a great buck. How's it taste? This is who I'm hunting with. In order to find the deer, you gotta be a deer. Oh, hi guys. Deer don't eat that stuff, deer eat that stuff. I'm out here with Steve. We're on his uh, late season whitetail deer hunt. I'm tagged out, I don't have a tag. Bear season ended three days ago too, so I don't have anything besides a cougar tag. Uh, but it's just Steve, I'm just out here trying to help him fill his deer tag. Season ends tomorrow, so he has today to hunt and tomorrow to hunt. We're going in late because Steve's a dad now and he has to take care of his baby girl before hunting, so we got here when the sun's already up high. We're gonna go back in there because all it takes is one hot doe to have a buck running around in the daytime. It is warm. We are slowly hunting our way in. The clear cuts that we want to sit in last are on this side, so we're almost there, but they are a lot of fresh deer sign and there's some buck tracks too. Bucks might be nocturnal, I don't know, but it's pretty fresh, so we know there's some bucks in here somewhere. Slowly hunting and glassing these small cuts around us. Then once we get back over there, post up and do some real glassing. This is when just having a general understanding of deer behavior comes in handy. So right now it's high noon and since it's bluebird skies, most likely with what I have been observing from these whitetails this past week is these deer are still in pre-rut stages. A lot of bucks are still nocturnal. They're not necessarily chasing does. There might be some that are chasing does right now. There might be some does that have gone into heat early. But because we're still in pre-rut mode, daytime like this, a lot of deer will be bedded down with bluebird skies like this because it's a little warm. And so right now we're in this big bowl of open clear cut with some timber patches. And so we've already like glanced over the wide open clear cuts. Haven't seen any deer. So now we're going to start shifting our focus into spots where deer are likely to bed during the day. That can be almost anything depending on where you are, but where we are hunting today, that will be either in thick brush, under a tree, or a clump of trees, or just in the dark timber where you can't glass them. So since we can't glass into the dark timber, we're gonna glass into the spots where deer could be bedded that we can actually see. So there are some small clumps of trees all throughout this uh, ridge, and I'm just gonna go and glass at the base of every single tree to see if we can spot a deer bedded. That's one technique. Another technique of where these deer can be bedded is just right in the thick brush. A lot of times when they're bedded in the thick brush, you can't see them because the white tails are relatively small and the brush is pretty tall. However, from time to time, depending on your angle, depending on where the deer is bedded, you can pick out like a like an ear or its head or its, its rump or something like that. And so this is when you really have to stabilize your binoculars and uh, take your time to pick things apart because glassing and just hand holding it with a little bit of shakiness like this it can cause you to miss a lot of things so I've got my little kestrel glassing systems adapter tripod adapter here I'm gonna put my binos on the tripod and we're just gonna start picking things apart if we don't see anything here we'll hike over to the next basin over and start doing the same thing
Dude, the rock's under the road. Spikes and it's like Let's go shoot her. it's that and this. <laughs> That's like the smallest spike in the world. <laughs> I just got done explaining to you how we're gonna glass for bedded deer. <laughs> Put the camera down, just got my binos and my adapter, and Steve's like, I got deer on the road. Turns out it's two spikes. It's like the world's smallest spike and a normal spike. He might even be a one by two. Looks like he has a little eye guard on his right side. But it's two spikes. Season closes tomorrow. Steve's freezer is has no wild game left so Steve is open to shooting anything legal which those two bucks are both legal and they're, they're sparring. sparring yeah they're sparring right now That's good so they're 560 yards from where we are but they're on the road we're on we just have to make a big loop there's a bunch there's a bunch of little ruts on this road so we can close the distance um, but I need to be quiet because I think they hear me but Steve is, is taking off his Puffy pants. They just looked at you. Yeah, they're just feeding. But <laughs> I told Steve, he was like, prior to this trip, Steve was like, I'm not shooting spikes. But yesterday, Steve was like, all right, season's gonna end. I am now open to shooting spikes. And I told Steve, I've got the spot for you. <laughs> gonna look at these bucks the maybe it's going right at too. maybe glass a little bit more and then we're gonna make a play on these bucks <laughs> Steve's about to shoot his personal best let's go what's our plan here just walk the road just leave our stuff here I don't know we can take our stuff do you think those 
not spook if we start packing. They're literally looking at us. Oh, they're just chilling. They're sparring. All right, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. We were going to go after them, but just where they were, they were in this gut. There's just no way to get to a shooting position without spooking them. So we're just actually staying and they got off the road, went up, and they're actually working their way towards us, kind of. And so we're not in a rush at all. So we're just gonna pay attention to see where these two deer go. And if they position themselves in a spot where we can make a better play, then we will. But I just don't think that there's a reason to rush this at all. I mean, it's midday and these two deer are up. We have plenty of light. So they disappear behind a little div and some trees. We don't see them right now. But I would assume that they're working their way to go bed somewhere. Are you going to shoot the bigger one? I'm going to try it. Okay. Dude, they're on a the mission. That one in the open right now is a small one. range hmm? 508 I say we'll let him come by shoot him <gasps> let him keep coming yeah. yeah there's no rush they're coming they're getting closer dude They're about to pop onto that clearing right now. They're in the trees. Just look at that top clearing to the left. Mm -hmm. They're about we're to pop. Huh? We're, we're meeting again? No, look, he's pop he's coming out in the timber right th he's coming out in the right there. Just go straight left where you saw them mm -hmm. to the open the big the biggest opening in that sunny patch. He's there right now. Look at him. You see them? Oh, yeah. Dude, they're just coming. Dude, they're going to pop out right here. Huh? What'd you say? Is it the bigger one up front? Uh, no, I think he's behind right now. I'll shoot whatever gives me a good shot. Okay. Dude, I think they're gonna pop out right here. Maybe they're both meat but... Dude, they're both, they're both legal. Oh, there's one right there right now. No, the bigger one's in front. No, that's the little guy. Dude, they're... Just let him keep coming, dude. This is nuts. Huh? It's 488 in the opening. Where they're at right now? Yeah, where they were. Yep. Yeah, they're 
like getting closer to you. It's a 392, so right, right in front of me, it's a 392. The upper one? 296. Above the rock? Yeah. They're above the rock? Yeah. What? They're almost to the ridge top. Are they really? Uh huh. We got a shot, dude. Where? At the very top of the clear cut. At the very top of the clear cut? How far is that? I don't know, I need to lose it. Dude, I, which clear cut? You see that stump? So look like there's a stump in the very middle of the mountain. Dude, I don't know what's, which clear cut you're talking about. You see that right one? Uh huh. There's a stump at the very top. Oh. Dude, that's not the very top, dude. That's just the ridge. Do you see the deer? I do. Can you ring it for me? Yeah. Four forty. Four forty. Yeah, but I'm not on him though. Four forty. I'm gonna go up to two point three. I'm ready, dude. You are. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yep. Whenever you're ready. Oh. <laughs> we hit him. Reload. He's dead. He's dead, dude. You just killed the deer, Steve. Let's go, dude. <laughs> That's gonna be the farthest shot to date. <laughs> oh. Dude, that happened yeah, so fast. <laughs> he was just in such a good spot, dude. I was rock steady on him. I was like, it's oh, so like, funny because like they've been on the move for like the past like 30 minutes and then they stayed in that one spot for so long that's the bigger one too dude you hit them perfect our first big game animal together man for your me. your yeah. first big game animal with me you hit i can't believe you know. that just happened he's dead on the camera screen dude they, they made the stock for us they made our lives easier steve just killed a buck wow i cannot believe how that just went down you can see him dead. He hasn't moved a muscle. 440 yards with Steve's 6 by creep. That bug made it like 30 yards and just fell over. I'm ecstatic for uh, Steve. Steve's on the phone talking to his wife right now. And, you know, I'm very fortunate to know Steve. He's been just a, just a blessing in my life. And I haven't got to hunt a lot with him this year or just fish with him in general. Uh, unlike the previous two years because back in May he actually had his first uh, kid he had a daughter and so me and Steve knowing that his daughter was coming around May we went turkey hunting in April uh, for our first trip we backpacked in and that was pretty much the last really the last thing I got to do with Steve well we went fishing one time before he had his kid and then after he had his kid I just never saw him you guys haven't seen him that's why he hasn't been in the videos some people think that me and Steve broke up our friendship but no it's not the case it's just that Steve's been busy he's a dad now and so I have not been able to uh to work two jobs to feed yeah and now Steve has to work two jobs too and so I haven't been able to get out with Steve at all and uh uh we he met up with us the other day when I was out with Colin and Jason but it was just that we were coincidentally hunting the same area so he came and talked to us for a little bit but nothing happened and then uh today i was supposed to come out here with my dad but my dad decided to go with my uncles and i was like well that, like that's fine so it freed me up steve told me that he was going to hunt today and tomorrow which is the two final days of the season and so i hit steve up i'm like hey if you want to partner like i'm free today and tomorrow and so steve he's been hunting all week and he passed up a spike earlier uh this week and he was like, man, like, I don't really know where to go at this point. I feel like I've just been everywhere. I'm like, I know of one spot. If you want to hike back in there, I mean, I can't guarantee big bucks, but if you're only looking for a spike, I'm sure we can find a spike. And so it wasn't until eight o'clock this morning when Steve finally left his house and he picked me up and then we, you know, got to the gate, took our sweet time hiking in here, got to this first clear cut bowl in here. And this isn't even my primary spot. My primary spot was one basin over, but this is typically where I stop when I hunt this area. So I stopped and 
you know, we kind of just got, I literally just got done putting my binos on my tripod to get start glassing. And Steve's like, hey, I've got two deer and they're, they're going up to the road. Sure enough, we class them and it's a little spike and a normal spike. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we had them at 540 yards. And so I told Steve, I was like, we can make a stock on them, but if we make a stock on them, like we're probably gonna blow them out because just because of the terrain, the only way we were gonna be able to get a stock in is if we step right on them and they don't bust out, which with whitetails, it's very, it's very rare for you to get close and be loud and whitetails not bust out on you. And so I just told Steve, I was like, man, sun's high. We go all day. Like, let's just wait out these deer and see what they do. And so they eventually got off the road and I was a little bit nervous because if they go up and over, then, well, there's that. But they went up and they started side hilling that ridge towards us. And I'm like, Steve, these deer are doing the stock for us. We just got to get set up. And so sure enough, we kind of just watched these two bucks cruise through the trees and popped out into a little clearing, came onto the face where I thought they were going to show up. And then I ranged it for Steve, 440 yards. Steve went up to 2.3 mils and I was like, I'm on him. Shot and he ran like 30 yards, tipped over. We yeah. see him dead right now. So we're going to pack up and go up there. I think this really highlights the importance of patience. And, and it's so hard, especially when you're out here, when you see a deer, you just want to rush at it. Yeah. And he was so tempting. I'm not going to lie. When we saw him, what was it, like 550 when we first saw him? 540, yeah. 540, and there's, it was a really strong wind when we first got here. It was really tempting for me to send a Hail Mary. But, you know, it's really important to recognize your limitations. And for me, I'm not going to say I'm the best shooter out there. Once I get over 500 yards, I really don't like to shoot. Yep. I feel like the practice range we shoot at, we shoot out to 420 there's actually a target at 420 and i'm just deadly within that range i feel like mm -hmm. i make mistakes obviously i'm not a good shot here but there's just a range i'm really comfortable with so we didn't want to reach over our limitations and worked out so i yeah. probably would have sent a hail mary and missed and <laughs> would have been another video of a missed whitetail for yeah me, but. <laughs> no this is just one of those things where uh it's a tactic that people always talk about right it's it's uh when to make a move and when not to make a move it's like you always have to take into consideration this is is this the right time to make a move on these animals or do we wait these animals out yeah. and uh, this is one of those situations where waiting the animal out actually paid off in our favor because if we were to make a stock we would have eventually missed them because they got off the road and we probably would have spooked them when they were above oh, yeah, us um, but you know it just kind of goes like you you really just have to judge have good judgment in the situation of course it's hunting so anything can happen but in this case, I told Steve, I was like, man, like, yeah. I think our best bet is just to wait them out. And fortunately yeah. for us, it worked out in this case. So, And also, and that's sound uh, discouraging, but Samong, obviously, I know he just said the story about this. Is our first day we hunted together. Yeah. <laughs> today marks seven days I've been out here hunting. And, like, today the stars align, you know, and the shot was made and yep. happened to be a hit. But for the last six days, I made a lot of these game plans and things just did not work out in my favor. So. It's it just had easy. it just had to happen out. with me. I think so, man. Me and Steve have been hunting together since 2021, and every time we go big game hunting, Steve would always just let me shoot. So he's had until this buck right here, he has not killed a big game animal with me. And so I'm driving here, he's like, "We have to make it happen." And so we did. We pulled out all the lucky cards. Steve drove his lucky truck, and <laughs> he hunted with me. That was it. Yeah. And so we got a buck down. We see him dead. He's not. He hasn't moved. I see his tail. He's dead in the sun. Well, we got some work ahead of us. Yep, right? it's noon, so we got to go pack up and dark, head up it's there. Gonna, it'll be so nice breaking an animal down in the light. I know. We can walk in the dark. <laughs> We'd like to have it done in the daylight. That's gonna be nice. All Did right. Bring a knife. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm, I thought you were gonna carry him out whole. You know, it's it's doable. No, it's not. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. See him? Yep. Yeah, I think we shot him right up here. Oh yeah. Wow, I didn't realize how close they were to the rock. There he is. I got him. That's the biggest white tail I've ever seen. Maybe we'll find an extra point on there. There's a mouse. He was eating my deer. I think he's a two point. I think we might have a second point there, bud.
He's a lot bigger body than I thought. Good two point, bud. Yeah. He ain't no spiker. Hey, no spike. It's awesome. He's a two point. Think, bud. That's awesome. Nice shot. How cool. So cool. You hit him perfect. Oh, yeah. Put this down. Not the biggest deer ever shot, but you guys, we're down the last two days. This is pretty much a meat buck at this point. I really do count on this deer every year to fill my freezer. I really enjoy the deer meat. That's what I usually take to work as my work meal. So it was kind of getting down to the wire, you guys. Earlier in the week, I did pass up one spike just because I did want a little bigger deer and had more days to hunt. But tomorrow the season closes. I didn't know if I'd have another opportunity and this one got my heart racing. It was a really fun hunt. Kind of the way it worked out, it was a fun shot, so I decided to take him. Thanks for Simone for coming out with me. And a huge thank you to my wife. Sarah, if you're watching this, she watched our newborn baby pretty much this whole week and let me go hunting. Not very many wives out there will do that. So I'm super thankful. Thank you, Sarah, if you're watching. Um, I'm hoping me and Simone can hunt again next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, good times, man. I'm excited. Oh, look at that beast. And I'm glad it happened with Simone. Uh, we really didn't get to hunt much this year, so the one day we actually dedicated to hunting together, I'm really glad it worked out. Yeah. It's awesome. And by now, I'm sure most of you guys have heard of these crazy elk tag wallets, but it's nice and secure. Put your tag in here, attach it to the antler with these zip ties. So this is easier if you actually shoot bigger deer, but we're going to make it work. And the cool thing is if a game warden wants to check us right now, we can actually take it off. We can show them the tag by just unzipping it. Or if you wanted, you can take it off. So it's kind of nifty, I think. Okay, we came in late. So today is like one of the shortest days of hunting. And it's also the day I brought the most food. Boiled eggs, never packed in eggs before. Got a dehydrated meal. Multiple cliff bars, gr granola bar, some uh, turkey sausage, and sour candy. Just so thankful for this deer, man. Like. When it happens, it happens, and it just seems like it's so easy. But when it does not happen, yeah. which we've experienced, the last six days, man. it's almost like it's impossible. So never take, never take a deer for granted. You know, this this deer means a lot. I know uh, Sarah, Steve's wife, is ecstatic to have some deer meat. I know Steve's ecstatic to have some deer meat, mm -hmm. and I'm ecstatic that Steve has some deer meat. Chances are, this will be the first deer. My daughter tries. Yeah, very much so. So since I have so much food, I'm just gonna uh, eat some so I can shed some weight and then uh, basically get this deer taken care of. And then we got some good stuff to cook this deer up with. Now something me and Simone did is we actually took the rib cage whole. We're gonna try and cook this up for dinner tomorrow night at my place, so hang tight for that. On the liver, we're missing it. <laughs> now, what's frustrating about this entire situation is Samong, when he packs his game bags, he just kind of throws things in here, right? Just randomly throws it. Me, on the other hand, I try to very carefully play Jingo with it and stack it just right. Well, his always comes out way better than mine, <laughs> and it's just irritating. I don't know why. You overthink it. I overthink it, I think, yeah. Just throw it in there, guys. It'll be, you gotta pack it on your back one way or another, so. That's the only bone, which is the spine. And then we have to hide. Everything else is in there. We cleaned it up. Right in this dirty bag is the stomach. I'm taking the stomach because the stomach on this deer was just beautiful. No gut shot, so the stomach was completely intact. It's a little dirty, but once I get home, I'll clean it up. Tripe is good. We already saw him.
this tender. So these are the deer ribs from the buck Steve just shot. And it's a pretty simple process. So I don't know what exactly Steve put in for seasoning, but he threw the ribs in the crock pot. The salt, pepper, bay leaves. Did you throw this in there? Some chili peppers. You did that after. I oh, did that after I hit him. Chili pepper, oil. Sesame seeds. Sesame seeds and then just water, right? Mm -hmm. And then basically threw in the crock pot for 45 minutes. Yeah. 45 minutes. Insta pot. Instapot. Yeah. Once they were done in the Instapot, we came out and threw them on the grill. And then just for some final touches, we threw on some seasoning right here. And at this point, the point of the crock pot is to tenderize the meat. And then the, or the grill here is to char the meat so that you don't have that boiled, soft mm -hmm. texture. So it's a little charred and this meat if it focuses, it's something good to cook in the back country, so you don't have to pack it. It just cook them over fire. comes right off. If you're staying an extra night, mm -hmm. not have to ever pack them out. You throw this into some buns, add some barbecue sauce, mm -hmm. make it a little sloppy joe in a way. So good. This might be one of the best reasons why you shoot a young deer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's extra tender. It is so tender. This has got to be one of the most tender bucks I've ever ate or killed, so good stuff. And most people leave this in the woods. Meal aside, it's fun to have the boys over, make a fire and just kind of hang out in the backyard, sharing stories about our hunts everybody did this year and kind of got some trophies out here. Good times. We even got Nate. <laughs> shows up at the end of the video. <laughs> just show up for the food. Yeah, he just shows up for the food. Nate got two... Nate got two deer this year also, guys. One deer. Oh, well, one with your he truck. He shot one with the truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nate's here. We're obviously at Steve's. We're just hanging out today. But before I close out the video, I'll go show you what happened to Nate's truck. We're just happy Nate's alive. Mm -hmm. Nate killed two deer. He shot his Oregon deer with me last month. And then uh, the other day, he decided to shoot one with his truck. So we'll go show that in a bit. But for now, we're just out here having a good time, eating good food. Even Remy's enjoying it. Yeah. You ever give him bones like that? No, just He's to so meet up. He's so dainty with it. He's like nibbling off the mm -hmm. dude. Not his first rib. <laughs> <laughs>